Uh, but how did this come down? Well, I didn't really get the call to do it, more the tweet to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got this I got this gig through Twitter uh, because I you know I follow Scott Derrickson on Twitter anyway, um, and uh, January twenty fourteen he tweeted, "Oh my God, just saw this movie Citadel on Netflix. Everyone needs to check it out." You know. Um, and so I just replied to that tweet and said, thanks. <laughs> um, and so then he started following me and just asked me like a dozen questions about Citadel and you know about working with kids, about you know what kind of schedule I was working on. And then said, you know, look, you'd be the perfect director for Sinister 2. You know, so that's how it came along. Um, well, the script that we spoke about, identical twins, you know, and um, uh, you know, so, so I knew that was going to be a hard a hard thing to find because after coming off of Citadel, you know, it's very apparent to me that it's, it, it takes a long time to find one good kid actor, but to find two <laughs> that are identical, um, that that was going to be a challenge. And, and, and so, you know, our backup plan was if we can't find twins, we, we'll just make them brothers, you know. We spoke uh, about oh, identical twins, <laughs> you know, and um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Um, and and so I, uh, we found these we found these guys, almost within the first week of looking, and and they were twin. They're actually part of a triplet. Um, and uh, and I I've asked casting to have a look in places that you don't, you wouldn't normally look. You know, in the in the sense that you know on uh, on Citadel, I found most of my kids at a local martial arts school. You know. And the reason I did that is because I'm always, you know, when you see a kid that has a manager, <laughs> you know what I mean, or, or you know, the the, the parents are like oh, like overly theatrical, and it's like you know that you get this kind of overly theatrical performance from the kids, and they never feel like real kids, you know. And so I wanted them to feel like they had a gritty and a raw kind of um, personality, and, and and felt like kids. So my first film, I found most of my kids in a local martial arts school, and you get, you get what most ten-year-olds lack, which is the a sense of discipline and focus, and, and the sport, the, the martial art brought that. But um, you also get kids that feel like real kids, and and so on this movie, we found these guys. Um, they they play hockey, you know, and so so they had they had all of those qualities plus their brothers, so they have a rapport with each other that you just wouldn't get if, if they were two kids that I just met for the first time. So that worked really well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. The, the, I mean, the script, the script initially uh, spoke about Colorado, and I think that was because Scott was basing it on this red church uh, that was, you know, it was a rectory beside a church where he grew up, and, uh, and, and, and so spoke about this rural location, and, and when we were thinking about where we would shoot the movie, there was a great tax incentive in Illinois. So, so we were like, well, let's just change the location to Illinois. You know, let's let's bring in cornfields and let's bring in you know um, some of that abandoned farm kind of uh, small town USA kind of feel to it. You know, so so um, so we went out there and we we shot. We were based out of Chicago, but we shot in a place called Kankakee uh, and St. Dan and. Uh, and we found this house where we shot, I and mean, we did very little to how that house looks. But um, but the trouble was in finding this church that was beside the house, and we found some great locations that had a real church. But then the church would ask to read the script. <laughs> Whenever they read the script, they were like, um, you know, it's you, you can't shoot here. You know, you've got people crucified to the floor and rats eating them from inside out. No thanks. So. So we found this house that had a, a red barn uh, attached to it, and then Bill Bowes and his production design team added the steeple that you see there. And, and uh, so yeah, I mean, it was it was part and parcel of the of the script was this rural location that felt like it was in the middle of nowhere, so you couldn't scream for it. Well, I think you, like that was in the script when I first got it. So so that's probably more a question for Scott or Cargo. Um, but I, I was aware that you know that that was a medieval torture device right. and, and uh, I remember thinking you know the one thing I, I, you know I think we've seen it a couple of times in movies this idea of, of, of a rat being you know I think in Fast and the Furious they have it and but I remember thinking to myself I've never seen the end product 
oh, I've never seen the rack coming out, you know? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so they said, you know, is there a way for us to make this work where we see the rack coming out? So, so um, we ended up shooting a, a real rat uh, with this kind of prosthetic piece of stomach. Um, and, you know, he, was, he had some sort of like food coloring on him. And, and, and they put a piece of food out on the other side of the stomach. And the, 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 the far side of the stomach was just hollowed out. He was just sitting there. And he just kind of poked through the silicone to come out and eat the food. And the reaction from everyone on set was, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And then when we finally put the shot together, you know, we, we, we comped in, composited in that stomach into our actress on the ground, added in the blood and the music and stuff, and the reaction is the opposite now. <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, making a horror film is, there's a lot of laughing on set, you know, because every day for the kids is Halloween, you know, and they, they know Nick behind the Bagul mask, he's their friend, you know, I have to ask them to stop kidding around because they're, you know, sort of, because he can't see, so they're like tipping him on the back and all this kind of stuff, and and um, you know, or or they're you know they're pulling out their prosthetic makeup, or you know, so it's just this kind of circus that you have to sort of like calm down and and, and shoot the scene. So there's a great sense of levity on set the whole time, and, and it's 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 all make believe, um, but. They're, they're they're probably not going to see the finished movie. <laughs> you know, like we have a we have a PG cut of the movie that we're going to show to them. You know, but uh, you know legally they're not allowed to see this R-rated movie, so they never sort of see it. No, no. On the first movie, uh, I think they shot the kill films like months before, so that they could project it for real uh, when Ethan Hawke was watching the movies. But on this movie, because because each of the kill films have some sort of visual effects component, you know whether that's snow, like they have CGI snow, or or the rats or the alligators, we, we couldn't do that because that's months of work, you know, uh, in post. So there was nothing on that screen except white, you know. And then we, when when the when the kill films were finished with all the effects added, we composited that into the screen. So okay. there was nothing on set. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would, I would just keep making movies. I mean, there's, there's, there's the ability today with, with, I mean, there's a film that I just saw, Tangerine, which is shot on an iPhone, you know, and it's, it's in theaters, you know, and, and you know, we, we almost all have access to smartphones that have capability today of shooting 1080p, which is something I never had, you know, uh, when I was younger. So. So you know, I, I would, my my advice to people would be just just keep making movies, and you can upload them onto YouTube. You can you can get them out there, and I think you know the 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 harsh reality of this game is that you know the best the best ideas survive, you know, and, and if something really captures people's imagination, it gets around, it gets spread around. So so that would be my advice: would be to just keep making movies, you know, telling stories and doing cool stuff.